Okay, so one of the Fed's main jobs is to manipulate the money supply. They increase the money supply, they decrease the money supply. Now what we have learned so far about markets is that each market for whatever product or whatever the item is, that there is a supply curve and there is a demand curve. And there are varying influences that cause the supply curve to shift to the right or to the left and for the demand curve to shift to the right and to the left. And what we said way earlier in the semester is that supply and demand are both relationships between price and quantity. And that supply is an upward sloping curve and that demand is a downward sloping curve, indicating demand has a negative relationship between price and quantity, but supply has a positive relationship between price and quantity, and this is what we're accustomed to. Now, what we're gonna talk about is the money market, and the reason we're gonna talk about the money market is because in, when, in a market where money is the product, what we have is we have money demand and we have money supply and money supply is what we're talking about right now with the Fed. So it makes sense to talk about the money market where the Fed has an influence or is controlling the money supply. But what we're gonna do here is we're gonna see a huge difference between traditional markets and the money market. See, the biggest difference that we're gonna see in the money market is the fact that the money supply where supply is normally a relationship between price and quantity, in the money market, it is not a relationship between price and quantity because the Fed is in complete control of the money supply. The Fed decides when the money supply increases. The Fed decides when the money supply decreases. And therefore, we don't have a higher quantity of money supplied when the price of money is higher. And we don't have a smaller quantity of money supplied when the price of money is lower. We have complete control over the money supply by the Federal Reserve. And so here's what we wind up with. First of all, the price of money is not called the price of money. If you remember going way back several weeks, the price of money is called the interest rate. So the interest rate for borrowed funds, right? Okay, interest rate is the, is the price of money, how much it costs to borrow money. Now, quantity, this is gonna stay the same. This will be the quantity of money. The demand curve is gonna be a downward sloping curve. We're gonna have money demand but the money supply is unaffected by interest rates. When interest rates are high, quantity is not higher necessarily. When interest rates are lower, money supply is not necessarily lower. Like we said, money supply is completely controlled for the most part in every way by the Federal Reserve. And therefore, the money supply curve, instead of being an upward sloping curve, is actually a vertical line. And so the money supply curve is a vertical line and whether it increases or decreases has nothing to do with interest rates. It has everything to do with whether the Fed wants to increase the money supply or decrease the money supply. Now here's the, the, the main thing that I want you to understand. The main thing that I want you to learn right now from the money market goes like this. The, note that the quantity of money in the money market is strictly determined by the Fed according to the money supply curve. But note also that the money supply curve does intersect the money demand curve to determine the interest rate. So we're going to put uh, equilibrium interest rate. So we'll put IRE, which is basically the equilibrium price of money. Okay. And what I want to show you here is this. There's only two things I want to look at. I want to see what happens if we increase the money supply 
or if we decrease the money supply. That's all I really need you to, the three, there's really only three things I need you to learn from this particular lesson. And that is that the money supply curve is vertical and controlled by the Federal Reserve. And in the next couple lessons, we're going to learn how the Fed controls the money supply, how the Fed increases the money supply, and how the Fed decreases the money supply with their three monetary policy tools. But what I, the second thing and the third thing I want you to learn here is I want you to understand how a change in the money supply affects interest rates in the economy. And so when the money supply increases, we're going to have an effect on the interest rate. And when the money supply decreases, we're going to have an effect on the interest rate. And I want to show you graphically how we know what happens to interest rates when the money supply either increases or decreases. And so we're going to look at each one of those circumstances. We're going to first look at an increase in the money supply. Well, an increase in the money supply means a rightward shift, right? Whenever either one of the curves increases, it shifts to the right. So if we do a rightward shift of the money supply curve, we're going to put money supply MS prime over here, vertical line, because I just said that the money supply curve is vertical, MS prime. And look, you can see here where it intersects the, the demand curve, what happened to interest rates? interest rates decreased, right? We've, we're going now down to IR equilibrium prime. And so what I need you to understand is that when the money supply increases, that means that there is more money in the economy out there for people to use. And when there is more money for people to use, when there's more money readily available, it becomes cheaper for people to borrow it. And that, what that means is a decrease in the price of money. And money that is cheaper is uh, more likely to be purchased. People are going to buy more of it. There's going to be a larger quantity demanded of money. Why? Because interest rates have gone down. Now, we're going to talk about, in, in the next set of lessons, we're going to talk about what a decrease in interest rates means for the economy. But for now, I just want you to understand that an increase in the money supply will lead to a decrease in interest rates. Now let's look at a decrease in the money supply, which is basically the opposite. You should already be ready for that. So now let's say that here's the money supply, and let's say that we have a decrease in the money supply, and that is a leftward shift shift of the money supply curve. So it's going to move to the left over to here. And so that's MS prime, double prime. And you can see here equilibrium where the new money supply curve intersects the money demand curve. You can see that the interest rate is higher. So equilibrium interest rate double prime there. You can see here that interest rates have increased when the money supply decreases. And so a decrease and the money supply is going to lead to an increase in interest rates in the economy. And this is something that you can understand. You can watch the news and you can see when they say that the Fed is trying to increase the money supply, you can expect interest rates to go down. But if you hear that the Fed is going to decrease the money supply in the economy, you can expect interest rates to go up, which means it's going to cost more money to borrow money, to invest in a business, to buy a house, or to buy a car, or anything else like that, okay? So this is the money market, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna move into understanding how the Fed increases or decreases the money supply.